Now that the Tulsa City Council has been given the green light, they gave the green light for a special election on the Improve Our Tulsa or IOT tax package. We wanted to get into some details about what this renewal package means, that election coming up on August 8th. We want to welcome back to the program Mark Fry, who's the CEO of Tulsa Performing Arts Center. Mark, good morning. Good morning. So you all have a big stake in IOT. Tell us about what you're asking from voters. Well, our, our uh, portion of the package is $79.7 million, and that will go toward renovations that are greatly needed. You know, the PAC is a little over 46 years old. It's lived a great hard life with thousands of performances and people through the doors and it's time to address some critical needs. You know, you gave a presentation to the city council recently. This tour happened in January. You gave a presentation here uh, a couple weeks ago and some viewers out there might be thinking, you know, why would I vote for this if I don't go to the PAC or if I haven't been there in a long time? What would be your response for folks who aren't necessarily patrons or patrons yet? Well, it's called show business for a reason. Mm. There's a business side to this that has great economic impact on our city. Uh, we have over a quarter of a million people come through our doors each year. They, we have ticket buyers from all the surrounding states and when they come to Tulsa they not only buy the ticket but they're going to our restaurants, our bars, staying in our hotels and with without addressing some of these critical needs some of these great Broadway acts, some of these great headlining acts like you know we had Tom Hanks a couple weeks ago. Sold out in minutes. They're gonna go somewhere else because the quality uh, of what we have backstage um, and front of house as well, it, it, there's some challenges. Um, there's a stairwell that's crumbling backstage that I had to walk Tom Hanks up through to get to the to the, PA, the Chapman stage. Yeah, and because it had been raining, we were dodging water puddles inside the stairwell, 20 feet below ground. That's that's what we're talking about. It's it really needs some some upgrade. You have some pictures from a slideshow you all did recently. I want to kind of take us through this loading docks backstage area. So let's roll the pictures. What are we seeing here? This is going to be the black ramp as it goes <laughs> up and the, the black ramp with the, the uh, yeah. well, this is the wrong picture, but let's talk about this first. Let's stick on this. Let's stick on this. Chapman Music Hall yeah. is what it looks like now. Let's go back to that first picture. There are no center aisles. Yeah, on so the Chapman Music Hall. I was blown away when you mentioned this. I've been here and I didn't realize that. Yeah, so back in the 70s, all the rage was the Euro European style of seating called continental seating. Uh, but in, in today's age, when we have to think about fire evacuation, unfortunately, we have to think about active shooter situations. Mm. Um, not to mention, if you buy the best seat in the house, you really have to say excuse me like 35 times going yeah. to your seat. Uh, it just is not the way we want to, to do business as a performing arts center. The anymore. backstage area here, let's talk about this. Yeah, an overwhelming theme is gonna be our ADA deficiencies throughout the building. Uh, and also, again, when these performers are on the road for so long, you want your theater to feel the best it can. And as you look at those those pictures, uh, it, it, it feels more, a little bit more like Alcatraz backstage than, uh, than a PAC. And for the crews loading stuff in. Yeah, so we only have a one truck loading dock. And this morning we we're finishing up loading in Lion King. To put that in perspective, they have over 20 semi trucks. Oh my god. And gosh. because we can't unload even two at a time, it delays everything it, and it adds labor costs. It's uh, it's just a, a lot of issues that we need to address so that we are on the same level as all the other great regional theaters in our part of the country. A steep climb there too. Yeah. So we showed the renderings and let's pop those pictures back up, the, the kind of drawing. What are we seeing here? If the $80 million goes through, what what could you expect? A, a, a big portion of that, uh, close to 40 million of it, will go toward renovating our crown jewel, Chapman Music Hall. Uh, it will totally reconfigure the seating. It will address some of the acoustical issues uh, in the hall. It will expand the stage a little bit past where it sits right now. And it gives better, easier access uh, for any of our folks that, that deal with ADA mm. issues at all. So right now, in, in the uh, orchestra level, if you are in a wheelchair or you're a wheelchair companion, we can't offer uh, the same seating all the way through the hall like we're supposed to 
because it was built in 77 when that wasn't part of the law, but it's part of the law now. We have about 30 seconds left. I don't want to forget about the private money. You are in the process of starting to raise private money that would go on top of the tax dollars if the package passes. Right? Yeah, I want the public to realize total renovation costs to do everything we want to do in the building is 120 million. This 79.7 is going to just springboard us toward hopefully raising the rest. And in that, that rest, what you're going to see are more bathrooms, better lobby space. Those are the things that we decided to put off because the critical infrastructure is what's important right now. Mark Fry with the Tulsa Performing Arts Center. Thank you very much for showing us and show and tell and seeing what we can uh, expect. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.